Hey everybody, today I want to talk about a topic that's become pretty controversial for some reason and I get asked about this quite a bit. It is all about oiling our hair before we wash it. So this pre-wash oil I'm going to discuss today is has nothing to do with the scalp because I don't believe in oiling our scalps. I believe in having a healthy microbiome using what nature gave us and that is sebum. So when I'm referring to a pre-wash hair oil, I'm referring to ends just into our mids and I'm going to be inserting different b-roll throughout this video so you can understand exactly uh, what I'm referring to. Our hair goes through a lot on a daily basis. We've got UV rays, we've got the pulling, the tugging, different products we're using in our hair, and we've also got water, and those are all stressors towards our hair. So let's just think of our hair as a sponge right now. When it gets wet, it gets swollen, and when it dries, it just dries down and shrinks. Common sense, right? Yeah, so just think about a sponge when we're talking about this and it'll be a lot easier to imagine. So basically this repeated swelling, so again, think about it as a sponge. So this repeated swelling and shrinking is called hydro fatigue. You're doing this a lot. Now as an independent host and producer, I interview tons of people and I actually have interviewed an Olympic swimmer who actually did go through hydro fatigue and she told me that her hair was an absolute mess because she was in the pool basically almost every day since she was a teenager and getting ready for this Olympic competition. Of course that's an extreme example but it's the concept of hydro fatigue but a really easy way to remember hydro is uh, hydration comes from the Greek word hydra. Think about the Greek island hydra. It's pronounced hydra in Greek but it's hydra. Okay think about the water so it's always about hydration equals the water content and the moisture would be like a wrap around that so your hydration would be the products that you're using in your hair to hydrate and then the moisture is locking it in with an oil for example so if you're going through hydro fatigue a lot the swell and the shrink well your hair is going to be more prone to damage fuzziness and breakage especially around the ends which are of course the oldest part of our hair so the pre-wash oil is supposed to act like a barrier, but of course, it's not a complete barrier, okay? So it's not gonna stop the water from completely coming in, but it's going to reduce the extreme swelling. This is why even just a small amount of oil can really go a long way when we're looking at our long-term hair health and our goals. So I'm gonna go into the two categories right now, okay? Sort of like the two schools of thought. The first one is going to be the very light and nutritional dense oils and the second one is going to be very silicone heavy oils and remember this has nothing to do with your oils every day okay so don't get don't get those mixed up i know it can be confusing but we're just focusing about we're going to wash our hair today what oil are we going to use let's go into number one so let's talk about the first category this is the light oils this everybody is the category that i belong to these are the products that I use, uh, either the cold pressed Moroccan oil or the cold pressed grapeseed oil. They are both very nourishing and they are both very lightweight. And I find that for my hair, they have never weighed it down. I personally just pretty much use now the grapeseed oil because I can use it on my skin as well. It is great for acne prone skin. So uh, it's also helped me with my rosacea as well. So I love it for my hair, face, skin body everything the grapeseed oil is very rich in antioxidants fatty acids it actually nourishes the hair and this is a key component of this first category which is the lightweight oils because what i'm trying to do is nourish my hair that's why i use these specific oils and that's why i'm not using oils that have a ton of silicones. We're gonna get into that in the second category, but for the first one, I'm telling you, I am looking for nourishment. The main purpose of these oils is nourishment and slight protection. Now, why do I use the light oils? Because my hair is on the finer side. My hair is also colored, but it's never bleached. So I don't need that much barrier protection as somebody who has bleached hair. So here's what these oils do prior to washing. Number one, it's going to help protect against hydro fatigue. Again, it's not a massive barrier. It does give you some protection though. It's gonna slow down the water absorption, so less swelling, so it doesn't have to go through so much swelling and so much 
uh, shrinking. Number two, it is going to help reduce the frizz and I have definitely see this because my hair is naturally wavy and if you comb wavy hair, you know, it's, it's, it's a frizz ball, right? And it used to be actually curly when I was younger, then it really relaxed to a mild wave. So your hair is actually smoother and then it nourishes. Remember, this category of oils is going to nourish. So it's going to nourish and soften the ends and it's going to give you a little bit of a slip Again, it's not the same slip as silicones, but it is going to give you a little bit of a surface slip. But more importantly, we are nourishing the hair, which again is my main objective because I'm always focusing on the health of the hair. So it's really simple. Just rub some between your hands 15 minutes before you wash it. And again, you don't need to leave it in for long periods of time because it's a very light oil and it's nourishing. So it's going to absorb very quickly. Most of the times I don't even notice it. My hair just actually looks really sleek and pretty by the time I go into the shower and wash it. Okay, and number two, second category are the very silicone heavy, silicone dense products. And um, this is the total other side of the spectrum. I do not use these. These are very silicone rich, quote unquote, oils. I don't really like to call them oils because of course I just finished the uh, cosmetic science formulation course where I added to my knowledge. And I can tell you guys though, some of these products that are really inexpensive, the way they can get away with calling themselves oils is you'll use 90% silicone and then add 10% nourishing ingredients. And there you go, you've got a nourishing product no, it's just a really silicone heavy product and you know they're they're really fillers to be able to sell their products because they're not nutrient dense and again people are going to complain about the pricing but if you want something inexpensive you just go for the straight oil like the moroccan and the uh grapeseed like i mentioned you can just do a one ingredient oil for this purpose and it works really well as well so why these work so well to us, to the consumer, to the human eye. They work so well because they're coating your hair. And that's why sometimes you, you'll get a product and you'll say, wow, it works really good. Or you'll leave the salon and you'll say, I don't know what they used or I don't know what they did, but at the end of it, my hair was smooth and shiny and it looks incredible. That's because these silicones uh, create a massive occlusive barrier to the hair and are giving your hair the appearance of something really shiny and smooth. And I have a video on silicones. I will link it below. Another thing that I learned from my course is that a lot of these ingredients, they're not bad. Like silicones are not bad. But if you have a product that's 90% silicone and 10% nourishing ingredients, what do you think that's going to do to the overall formulation? It's really about the formulation of the product, the type of silicone. Remember, higher end products, uh, they'll use better silicone. So the overall formulation would be better. It's the same concept of alcohols. And I am going to do a separate video on alcohols so we can all learn how to read about the different alcohols. And remember, alcohols, they're, they're not bad. It's how you use them in the formulation and the type of alcohols. Okay, so let's just get back to the silicones now and the heavy silicone. So when you're using a very, very heavy silicone based products before you wash your hair, you're adding pretty much an occlusive barrier that's going to protect the hair from swelling. So remember here, we're talking a surface level protection. There's no nutrients here because it's they're not nutrient dense products. So they're actually not penetrating your hair shaft. So what I'm doing with the lighter oils is remember, I'm getting nutrients for my hair. We've got the antioxidants, the fatty acids in here. So hair is getting a lot of nutrients and a little bit of protection. Here, you're not getting nutrients, but you're adding a barrier to the hair to protect the hair from a lot of swelling. But remember, what are your ultimate goals? If your goals are nourishment, those silicone heavy products, they're not nourishing your hair, they're coating the hair with a little bit of nourishment. But like I mentioned, it's all about the formulation. So here's what I do if you wanna copy my specific routine. Prior to washing, I'm using a little bit of grape seed oil, letting it sit in for 15 minutes. Literally, it's invisible by the time I go in. I am washing, conditioning, or masking, coming out, doing my leave-ins, my uh, heat protector, just doing my blast blow dry and leaving everything else natural. And then during the week, I am simply just using a very light oil or an elixir oil just to maintain the health of the ends, to keep them nice and shiny and bouncy. 
And then lastly, don't get mad at your hairstylist if they don't believe in this because I have been now uh, working on producing a video where I compare and I contrast all the hair professionals knowledge from their education to their scope to their experience, so on and so forth. If when you're in beauty school, you're not taught this, well, you don't know what you don't know. So that's why it's really important uh, to look at a variety of advice and opinions because trichologists, formulators, hairstylists, dermatologists, they all have valid information. But unfortunately, there's not one that has all of the answers for you. My dermatologist cannot give me all the answers for my hair. Either can a trichologist, either can a formulator. It's really taking a little bit of information from each person, even influencers who give us anecdotal information. I love to see that. There is nothing wrong with somebody giving me their opinion and telling me how a product worked on their hair. Again, I mentioned it before, when they present it as opinion, it's okay. When they present it as facts, I think that's where we really have to get our analytical skills uh, working in there. All right, everybody. So there you have it. That's the lowdown. My honest feelings about oiling your hair before you wash it. Is it good? Is it bad? I think the answer is really, is it for you? Depends on your hair type, where you are in your hair journey. We'll think about that next time you're buying the oil or you're using it on your beautiful locks. And of course, any specific inquiries, always welcome in the description box below. Be well, everybody, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Peace, peace.